best. Uh, Mr. Danishmand is an accomplished producer, director, and international filmmaker with more than 25 years film and video experience. He's the son of a judge and at his core an activist with a keen sense of justice and a passion for giving voice and insight to political and social injustice. It's a, it's a happy time to have him here, but the reality is he has lived through and witnessed a great deal of human suffering in, uh, in Iran. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. I want to talk about Baha'is in Iran. How many of you know what Baha'i is? Just few. Baha'i is a religion. It's a brand new religion, about 150, 60 years, uh, 60 years old. It was originated in Iran. Comes out of Islam, trying to go progressive and everything. And because it comes from Islam, has been treated really badly by the Iranian clergy from day one. Now, of course, in 1979, the clergies who used to do all their you know, uh, dirty work through manipulation of the government, the secular government, now they have the government in hand. They are the government. So they start the um, systematic discrimination of the Baha'is in Iran. Now, before I go any further, I do not need to tell you. I have written down here what genocide is, but I don't need to tell you that. You all know what genocide is. And believe it or not, a gen uh, I believe that to, uh, towards the Baha'is in Iran, there has been a systematic genocide happening. And of course, nobody hears about it. So let me tell you the list of things. When I talked about the, the discrimination of Baha'is, I want to read to you one by one what are these discriminations? Let's talk about it. Let's see what they are doing. First of all, in the Constitution, when they started, the revolution happened, they had a brand new Constitution. There was no mention of the Baha'is. They mentioned every minorities, uh, religion minorities, but Baha'is were not there. And that actually became the basis of all the discrimination that followed because they say this is not a uh, uh, recognized or official uh, uh, religion. Because they did not recognize it, therefore, all the marriages that it's done within the community and with their tradition and their religion is no. It's not accepted. And their children, therefore, is considered out of wedlock. Bastard. The first thing Islamic government did when it, they came to power, all the Baha'is around the country, the Iran is a big country. At that time, there, was, there were 35 million people at that time. All the Baha'is who were working in government agencies, they were thrown out overnight. It doesn't end there. They, threw them out without any compensation, whatever they had already uh, uh, gathered for their uh, retirement and whatever, gone. Now, it gets even worse. On many, many occasions, they asked them to pay back all the salaries they got all their lives. And they had, to, many of them had to sell their houses to pay back all the salaries that they got throughout their, their lives. A lot of Baha'i children were thrown out of school. A lot of teachers, Baha'i teachers were thrown out of school, professors thrown out of school. And what happened was, just a little fast forward a little bit here, those professors and the teachers who were thrown out of school, they came to people's houses to teach the kids so they will stay educated. Guess what happened? They caught them, they tortured them, and many of them were executed, hanged by rope as young as 16-year-old girl. Teacher, who was just left high school, she said, now that I'm not at high school, I'm just gonna go and help the kids. At least the kids stay you know, busy and educated. They were left out of work, they cannot work any government, so they have to go and do some work. 
no business license will be issued to a Baha'i, period. You cannot do it. You cannot open a shop and go and get a license for anything. Now, if you are a Muslim, or a Christian, or a Jew, and you want to give a job to a Baha'i, you will be caught, put into jail, and pay fine. So you, as a, even as a, as a citizen, you cannot even help them get a job. So they actually were going through a lot of hardship, uh, because of financial hardship. A lot of Baha'is at that time, they were very fluent, uh, I mean affluent. They picked them one by one, they confiscated all their belongings, and whatever the whole institution had, like uh, churches, offices, lands, schools, they took everything, including the, actually the money that was in the bank. So they left the whole, in go ahead please. How was the Baha'i identified? The very good question, I because the answer to that is the basis of all these atrocities. What they did was, everywhere you go, there is a column with religion you have to check. The problem with Baha'is, from my point of view, is that they cannot lie. <laughs> so they, they, so they, don't, uh, they don't write. Uh, that I'm not a Baha'i, and they do, and because of that, that's what they get. Baha'is had their own cemeteries. You have to understand, Baha'is are very progressive. Baha'is are very industrious. Baha'is are very service-oriented. Baha'is like to make heaven on earth. So wherever you go, when there is a Baha'i place, it is always nice, clean, and beautiful. So they had beautiful cemeteries. No more. The cemeteries are taken away from them, and when they execute them, they don't let them go to the, um, uh, um, their own cemetery. They created a dump, which they call it uh, the land of infidels, and they, they don't bury them. They dump them into very shallow graves. Some of the people that I know, they used to go and just do this and recognize their dead from their jacket that was wearing. So, and what they did, again, gets even better. All the, and not only they confiscated the land of their cemeteries, they bulldozed all those graves. So what is happening today when I have been um, interviewing about 170 individuals so far who have been discriminated, their uh, loved ones have been killed, they have gone through hell, almost 100% of them, there is no graveyard to go to, to go and uh, mourn. They don't know where they are. And majority of them, they haven't even seen the body. The bodies have, and some who have seen, is very interesting. If they are executed by firing squad, they deliver it to you, and they charge you for every bullet. So you pay for the bullet because the bullet has to go to them so they can go and kill other people. So, now, as you, we already understood, none of you had heard any of these. And that's why I call it a quiet genocide. The Islamic Republic in the early days of the revolution adopted a sort of genocidal policy of exterminating the leadership of the Baha'i community and it did not hide the purely religious nature of the persecution. The pain of losing a parents, it never goes away. Today, in Iran, we have hundreds of thousands of people who have been discriminated, executed, jailed, tortured, raped, anything you can imagine. It's one of the worst countries in the world in terms of human rights. More than 60 times has been condemned by the United Nations. This is irony. Revolutionary Guard 
takes this gentleman from the prison every day to interrogation. Tell them, become Muslim. What is this stupid thing you are doing? Become Muslim, this and that. And they slap him. They slash, uh, uh, put, uh, they destroy them, send them bloody into the thing. All of these things, they do it to them. And then they bring them back again. And he says, come on, you don't want to see your kids? You don't want to see this? You, wanna call, you don't want your house? Come on, just, just, just one damn sign. Go and do it. This is the irony. This stupid system, with these puppets of this system, they are telling this man, this is what they are saying, you who have been all your life dedicated man, honest man or woman, because there are many women among the martyrs, who have served the humanity all your life, come and become Muslim so you can become like me, a torturer a killer, a, 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 a selfless, a, self, uh, a selfish son of a bitch. That's what I want you to be. This is the irony. And of course, they don't understand that one of the, this actually helps them. I don't want to become like you. <laughs> I'd rather die. And they do die, and they, many of them died. As simple as that. 